In software development, there are three types of complexity. Complexity in the domain. This complexity comes from the complicated nature of the business area. Simplifying business processes and concepts can help, but this is often beyond the control of developers. Complexity in the implementation. This type of complexity is local to a class or small set of classes. To manage it, we apply clean code principles, solid principles and design patterns. Most software systems can cope with a few localized complexities without significant issues. Complexity in the architecture and design. This complexity is global, resulting from unclear responsibilities and tangled dependencies of multiple components. It is this type of complexity that can ultimately determine the success or failure of an entire software project. Just as the solid principles guide us in writing clean and maintainable code at the class level, the following principles of component design guide us in partitioning classes into components to reduce complexity at the architectural level. But what actually is a component? A component is commonly defined as a reusable, independent deployable binary unit of software that performs a specific function and interacts with other components through defined interfaces. If the responsibilities and dependencies between such components are well managed, we can fix bugs and add features by redeploying only those components that have changed. This allows teams to focus on isolated components without worrying too much about the entire system. The first principle of component design is the reuse release equivalence principle. Imagine you are reusing a logging component from a different team. Apart from proper functioning and useful documentation, you also expect that each release of this component is properly versioned. Proper versioning allows you to track changes such as bug fixes and improvements and decide when to upgrade to a particular feature set. Now, imagine this team also provides a library for parsing configuration files and decides to include this library in the same component for convenience. To release an update of either the configuration file parser or the logging functionality, the entire component must be released. If you use the configuration parser in your application as well, you cannot integrate logging changes independently from changes in the configuration parser and vice versa. This might not sound like a big issue, but suppose you need an important fix in the logging functionality for the current release of your application and at the same time the configuration parser contains breaking changes you don't want to integrate yet. Therefore, the reuse release equivalence principle demands the granule of reuse is the granule of release. The second principle of component design is the common reuse principle. Consider our previous example of a logging library and a configuration parser being part of the same component. Let's assume in your application you want to manage your configuration with a different library, so you no longer use the configuration parser from that particular component. However, every time this component is released by the other team, you need to revalidate your application to ensure everything still works as expected. This causes unnecessary effort if the release is not related to the functionality you are using from this component. Now let's further assume the other team introduces a dependency on another component to support managing configurations in databases. This adds an indirect dependency to your application even so you are not using this functionality. In contrast, if the other team puts a class for efficient daytime formatting in a separate component, even so the logging implementation relies on it, you need to manage this additional dependency. This increases your application's complexity and maintenance cost. Therefore the common reuse principle demands the classes in a component you reuse together. If you reuse one of the classes in a component, you reuse them all. This means well-designed components should be inseparable. Classes that are not tightly coupled should not be in the same component. In the end, applying the common reuse principle results in smaller components with high cohesion among the classes inside the component. The third principle of component design is the common closure principle. Imagine a classic layered architecture where features are distributed across different components and layers. Components in the presentation layer contain the UI related parts of a feature. Components in the application layer contain classes implementing all business aspects of a feature. And components in the persistence layer contain classes related to the persistence of a feature. When a requirement change occurs, it likely leads to changes in several classes across different components and layers. This increases the number of components that need to be tested and released, raising overall maintenance costs and increasing the risk of unintentionally affecting other system functionality. 
The principle of closure in this context means that classes within a component are grouped together because they are likely to change for the same reason. If classes that need to change together are part of the same component, the changes are localized and isolated. Therefore the common closure principle demands the classes in a component should be closed together against the same kind of changes. A change that affects a component affects all the classes in that component and no other components. These principles guide us how to partition classes into components. While general function decomposition can be a good initial input, these principles work best when applied bottom-up, meaning when most classes of a component already exist. This implies that you need to constantly monitor how responsibilities and dependencies of components change due to evolving class dependencies and apply necessary refactorings. The tool I developed and frequently use for this purpose in projects ranging from just a few thousand lines of code to multiple million lines of code I will reveal in this video.